Hi guys, thanks for joining us today. We've got the director, Jeff Pocock from Osteopore joining us today. Jeff, thanks for being here. Thanks very much for inviting me. Now, before we get started today, just a quick bit of background. Um, Osteopore, you guys had a ripper last year uh, listing on the ASX. Absolutely. No, look, we're really pleased with the support that we got from ASX. The company listed in September, we raised five and a quarter million dollars and it was really well supported both through the IPO process and then obviously the trading after that that saw us go up and getting really well supported at 80 cents, 90 cents and above that number. So the IPO um, investors, really comfortable, really happy with their, with their returns and really supportive of the company and the broader ASX community of showing once again how much they embrace risk how much they're happy to get involved in companies like Osteopore that are pushing boundaries in new medical technology. Absolutely, it's an exciting space. I actually, um, funny enough, I got into the ASX um, or investing about 11 years ago because of regenerative medicine. I was like, this thing's gonna be the next big thing. Absolutely, and yeah. 11 years later, this is where we see it. And, and that, that no notion of regenerative medicine and what regenerative medicine means is so important in modern medical technology. People are increasingly looking for products that boost and augment and work with the body's natural regenerative capabilities rather than being a replacement for that, rather than trying to override that and, and produce artificial scenarios. So that's the core of the osteopore technology is producing scaffolds that are bioresorbable, but also actually work to augment and support the body's natural regeneration of bone. Well, it kind of makes sense. The body designed to heal itself. And um, I've I mean, when I saw it 11 years ago, I was like, this is the future, and now the future's here. Absolutely, that's exactly right. And that's what the osteopore scaffold does. It is taking advantage of the body's natural regenerative capability. And bone is such a great tissue, a great uh, place in the body to start with regenerative medicine. Bone wants to regenerate. You know, if you break your arm, the doctor puts it in place, the bones will knit back together. The bone wants to regenerate. But what bone won't do is it won't regenerate across a void. It won't regenerate if a piece of bone is being taken out and the bone can't bridge that gap. And that's where the osteopore scaffold comes in. It comes in and it provides that scaffold that's microstructured so the bone can grow through the scaffold and then gradually the product bioresorbs. It, bio, it, it gets dissolved and goes back into the body leaving just natural healthy bone behind. And that's, you know, that's where we see the, the uh, modern medical technology and the, the trends in medical technology going towards towards regenerative medicine and towards taking away from these sort of permanent implants and looking for bioabsorbable, bioresorbable products that don't have any long lasting you know, residues left in the body. Can you explain to people like that aren't familiar, how does it actually work? Like what's it made out of for it to be safely bioabsorbable um, and where can it be used in the body as well? Okay, so the product is made out of a polymer called polycaprolactone, PCL. And polycaprolactone is very well known as a medical polymer. It's very safe, it's very well tolerated by the body. It's the polymer that's used to make dissolvable stitches for surgery. So it's been known, it's been used in, in medical procedures for a long time. So it's been, you know, it's known, it's been used in the body for a long time. and what um, Osteopore does is we take this polymer and we 3D print it. And that's one of the key things that makes Osteopore scaffolds so unique. The fact that they're 3D printed means you get really, really control, really good control of the microstructure and the microarchitecture of the, of the scaffold to create what we call a biomimetic um, scaffold, a biomimetic structure that basically is replicating the way that bone naturally wants to regenerate. So you've got a really good, um, porous structure that the bone can grow through and go completely through. So if you've got a, a length of bone being replaced or being, you know, being supported for that regeneration, the bone will grow from both sides, it will grow all the way through it so that you get continuous healthy bone regenerated through the scaffold and then as that scaffold dissolves you're just left with natural bone behind. And is this a proven cons? Like, have you used this in patients or are we still in trials or where are we at with it? Okay, so the company, absolutely, good question for, from an investment perspective. This is a company that is really significantly further advanced than a lot of the sort of the small cap, micro cap uh, medical technology companies. This product has been used 30,000 times in humans. So it's been used extensively and repeatedly. We have regulatory clearance in, in major markets and we're doing procedures all the time. So we get generating sales in the company already. The company already is generating around a million dollars a year in sales. We have the regulatory approvals and we have over 30,000 successful procedures being completed using the osteopore technology. Well, it's good to know that it works, I suppose. Absolutely. No, it is, it, it is good to know that it works and it's good to know that it's, you know, it is past that research and development phase. And this was one of the things we found through the IPO of being able to say, look, this is not like so many you know, junior small cap um, medical technology companies. 
you know, we're still developing the technology, we're still developing the range of procedures that it can be used in, but it works. We know that it works, we have IP granted, we have uh, regulatory clearances obtained, and we're being used in the clinic on a regular basis. Yeah, I, th I think that's a big de-risker, because I, I mean, I remember when I used to look at a lot of these regenerative stocks, they were very much like, um, you know, they're very hopeful type stocks that they might be able to work, whereas yours obviously, it yeah. works. It's and it's the nature of, it's the nature of early stage investing, it's the nature of early stage companies. They have to go through that extended period from original idea to generating revenue. And Osteopore's been through that. Osteopore, the technology that, um, our techn you know, the, the, the research was started 20 years ago. So this has been developed through the Singaporean um, academic research institutions for a long time. The company has been around, the, the operating company's been around for 10, 15 years. So you know, it's been there, it's done those hard yards and it's come through the other end and is now poised. So you know, it's that classic case of it takes 10 years to go from nothing to a million dollars of revenue. But going forward from there, once you've got to that stage, that's a really strong platform to build revenue and build commercialization activities. Absolutely. And you touched on um, some of your overseas markets, but just before we get to that, um, I'd like to know, look, what was the, before this technology existed, what was the previous processes and procedures that it's like making obsolete? <coughs> okay. So at the moment, there's a range of, you know, we talk about bone not regenerating across a void. There's a number of procedures that uh, surgeons will use at the moment to, to address that. One is uh, bone graft. So you'll have harvesting bone typically off the hip or other parts of the body, and then that will be used as a filler effectively to, to create that scaffold and create that environment where bone can regenerate. Um, that's fine, that works, but it does create a, a risk of complications. And this risk of complications is what's really driving these ideas of, we talked about earlier about regenerative medicine and about bioresorption. The risk of complications is something that the, the health community is increasingly wants to be aware of and, and minimise. So, we're seeing with, um, with a, a bone graft, you, know, you have got risks of complications. You've got um, you're harvesting bone off another part of the body. So you have what's called cosite morbidity, where you can actually have complications at that point where the bone is being harvested. You're also creating a second surgical site. So there's obviously a risk of infection and surgical risk associated with that. So the other technology that's used by surgeons is permanent implants, where there's a, a gap in the bone or when the bone's been removed, you can put a permanent implant in place, maybe titanium, maybe another polymer. But those products, they, there are complication risks associated with that as well. The implant can become loose, the implant can become damaged or cracked, and the final risk is one of infection, that you can get infections at that, uh, around that implant, and even in particular between the implant and the natural healthy bone. And that can be very dangerous and very difficult for the body to clear. So by having a structure where we have the biomimetic in, um, infrastructure to enable regeneration, but we also have no foreign material left behind. After a period of two years, that osteopore scaffold dissolves and all you're left with is natural healthy bone. That's massively changing the complication risk for the patient. Absolutely. And with um, the product itself, like, if, are you guys targeting like a specific, like um, I think about the bones I've broken over the years, and I think like, do you target like say, like legs or a particular part of the body, or how do you kind of get yeah. this? Out? At the moment, the majority of our products are actually for cranial, craniofacial, so around the head, replacing both for the skull, um, the interior bones sort of under the eyes and the sinuses and those sort of areas. We also do some aesthetic work in uh, cartilage regeneration for uh, rhinoplasty, for re reshaping noses. But we are increasingly looking at other markets. And so if you look at the, the bone graft substitute market, you are looking at you know, products in the, uh, in the dental space. And in particular, that's a, a, a major opportunity where we're currently doing development work and clinical work around demonstrating how we can regrow the alveolar ridge, which is essentially the the bone in the jawbone where the te where uh, teeth would be embedded into the jaw. So in situations where dentists are, are removing teeth or need to remove teeth, one of the problems is there's often not enough bone density left in the jaw to put implants back in. So what we're doing is developing a range of procedures whereby we can regenerate that lower jaw and regenerate that bone density in the alveolar ridge to enable better affixation for dental implants. And that's a massive opportunity. The dentists we're talking to really enthusiastic about this because they can see a massive unmet therapeutic need, a massive problem with patients that need implants but they don't have sufficient bone density to affix them properly. And we're also looking at the orthopaedic market. So that covers everything from legs, arms, spine, ribs. And we've got a number of trials and a number of cases here in Australia, in Oman, in Singapore, 
uh, and in Germany where we've seen really significant results of regenerating anything up to you know entire tibias. The gentleman on the Gold Coast, Ruben Lichter, was uh, uh, featured on the ABC quite recently and just after our IPO in fact and he had his entire tibia regrown using an osteopore scaffold. So that's a massive opportunity, completely life-changing procedure and shows the versatility of the osteopore scaffold to work in any of these sort of bone regenerative areas. Absolutely, it's pretty exciting for patients that need it. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, this is, you know, these sorts of procedures are, you know, there, there is no alternative for some of these sort of procedures. And the, the impact um, can be life-changing in terms of what the, the, the therapeutic and the, the general lifestyle benefit to a patient can be when this bone can be regenerated in this way. And how does it, like, in terms of you getting this out to market and so patients can benefit from it, um, like, like, are you educating patients or do you have to go to the doctors or how do you get this out there so yeah, people so know about it? Our core of our business is we're a manufacturer of the product and we work with distributors who are effectively the, you know, we're, we're the wholesaler, we then provide the product to the distributors who then provide the, um, the education and the support to the surgeons and the hospitals to put that in there. So it's very much driven at yeah, educating the, the medical fraternity, the healthcare systems in terms of the better patient outcomes, and also the surgeons in terms of both the better patient outcomes and the procedures and the opportunities that the technology offers. And we do that in conjunction with distributors, and we're in the process of looking at building that distribution network so that we can control the manufacturing process because that's what we do best, and we can then work with the distributors that have the boots on the ground, so to speak, in the different markets that we want to get into, like the US and the European markets. Okay, and with those, you touched on earlier that you're licensed, uh, or you got the F, like, I guess my question is, like with these markets, I'm assuming there's different regulatory approval, whether it's FDA, TGA. Um, what what are you guys covered for? Like, if you at the moment, so at the moment we have a range of different um, regulatory approvals in in key markets. So we have got FDA clearance, we have got CE mark of approval. So we have got the ability to sell product into the US and into the European markets. We're in the process of getting TGA approval here in Australia. We expect to see that sometime during 2020. Um, you know, it's a case of just going through the exercise with that. We also have regulatory approval throughout um, a range of countries in the Southeast Asian region, uh, sort of Singapore, Malaysia, Vietnam, the Philippines, and a range of other nations in that area. Um, we have uh, approval in Korea, and we have a, num a very significant sales presence in Korea. And we're in the process of, secure, of working with uh, China on how we would get uh, regulatory approval into the Chinese market. And uh, just late last year, we signed an MOU um, with, the, with Hainan in the, the Hainan province in southern China, which is being seen as being sort of the entry point into the Chinese market for a range of medical, uh, international medical device distributors. All right, Jeff, so it sounds like the, the market potential for this is um, pretty big, especially for osteopore entering these markets. Can you run us through that potential size? And also, um, I mean, you have been making sales up to date. Like, what, what's that looked like since you've IPO'd? Yep, so the market size for, for these sort of products is in the billions of dollars. So bone graft substitutes, which is the sort of the, the subset of the market that we sort of target and sort of see as our, our addressable market, that's you know, forecast to be in the order of about $4 billion US dollars over the next few years. So, you know, you're talking about billion-dollar markets um, across all of these sort of therapeutic areas where we're looking to target. So the market potential is massive. Um, and you know, we're, we're generating sales at the moment. We generated just over a million dollars of sales in 2019. But what's been really pleasing is to see the growth that we've seen 2018 to 2019 and even Q3, the, the third quarter of 2019 versus the fourth quarter, where we start to see the impact of the IPO and we start to see those revenue numbers ticking up and really starting to see the, the, the monthly sales revenues and the quarterly sales revenue is growing, and that's what we want to see de delivered over the uh, over the coming uh, coming quarters. Well, hopefully that trend continues for you guys. Um, but I, I've got to think with such a big market opportunity, there's got to be competitors. Um, are there any in that space, and how how do you guys differentiate from what's out there? Yeah. So there's obviously a number of competitors in the space, and a number of products that are working in this sort of space, but. At this point in time, there are no other competitors in the market that combine those two key features of the osteopore scaffold. There's no one else that is both bioresorbable that doesn't leave a permanent product behind, but also creates that biomimetic architecture that facilitates natural bone growth. So that's the space that we're currently sitting in. There's no one else in the market that's offering those products. There are a number of groups globally looking at doing research in these sorts of areas using different polymers and different materials different procedures none of those are actually in the market at the moment and so all of those sorts of things you know we have to look and you know see what's coming but at the same time being aware of there's a 
uh, clinical risk associated with these competitors because they're not actually in the market yet. So at the moment, we've got a really unique positioning in the market and we're keen to really excel, um, accelerate our growth based on that unique positioning. Fantastic. Well, it sounds like you've got a bit of a first mover advantage as well in there. So. Well, that's, what, that's certainly the hope. And, you know, it's, it's all about being better than the alternatives. It's, at the moment, the key is to, is to be demonstrating those superior patient outcomes over the existing sort of bone graft or permanent implant markets. Absolutely. And, and with um, the ASX listed companies at the moment, are there any peers that you look up to that kind of you see, you know, osteopore, um, you know, kind of becoming or like having a market value that you kind of want? Yeah, look, I mean, we, we see some aspirational peers in the market that are in that regenerative space, the polymers, and we are looking at the companies, you know, the, the, the big ones, the Polynovos and the Avitas, and, and we see those sort of companies being really materially re-rated. Um, in the market as they get to sort of around that $5 million US dollar, so $7, $8 million plus um, revenue numbers. And that's a real sign of the, the companies having generate, being in the position where they're generating you know, meaningful revenues in key markets. And those companies are valued at north of, north of a billion dollars each. So we look at Osteopore now, capped at about $60 million, and we can say, look, there's significant upside for investors as we start generating those revenues and we start building that revenue profile we start looking at those aspirational peers and we look at what the market is valuing those companies at. And I think it's a really compelling investment proposition. And Jeff, can you run us through some of the people behind the scenes that are on the board and what skills and experience they bring to the company? Absolutely. Look, we've got a really, really solid board and a really, really solid management team that's executing. So at board level, we're, you know, our chairman is Brett Sandercock. He's the CFO of ResMed, has a, a wealth of experience around the medical device industry and also the capital markets and the growth of how you grow companies and how you translate that growth into value for shareholders. We also have the original founder of the technology, the Professor Teo, who's a professor of bioengineering at Nanyang Technical University. And you know, he's the original inventor. He knows so much about you know, one of the world's leading experts on bioengineering, tissue regeneration. And at management team level, we have Kun Sen Go, who's our CEO based in Singapore, and also has 30 years of experience in medical devices and building distribution networks and building the sales profiles of these sort of devices. So we've got a really, really solid team at, um, at board and at management level. We also have people with my, my experiences in, around ASX and we also have Stuart Carmichael who's on the board as a non-executive director from Ventnor Capital in Perth. And he was really responsible for identifying the fit between osteopore and the ASX environment. And so he really drove the idea of being able to see how the company needed to secure the capital from ASX and create a successful transaction that's seen you know, osteopore really being well supported in the market. Well, uh, we look forward to obviously seeing how the story goes as it unfolds. Now, um, last question for you, like obviously we touched on a little bit about future um, aspirations. Like in three years time, if we're having this conversation, I'm sure we'll catch up before then. Um, but if we're having this conversation in three years from now, what things do you think Osteopore would achieve or what would you like to have achieved and ticked off? I think the keys for you know, Osteopore going forward over the next three years is to just to continue building that revenue and continue building that market penetration into those key markets and to increasingly diversify and build more products and more therapeutic procedures. So you know, we'll be looking at getting further into the dental markets, further into the uh, orthopedic markets and building that revenue globally into you know, less reliance in the Asian markets and more exposure to the US and the European markets that we'll be able to drive things. So I think that's the, the, the future for osteopore, the, the near term future is all around, you know, we have a really, really compelling value proposition. We have a really, really compelling technology that enables that. And now it's a case of going out and just delivering on the commercialization of that. Fantastic. Well, we look forward to tracking the story and um, we're glad, yeah, technology like this exists to obviously improve people's lives and um, maybe investors can even make some money. I'm sure a lot already have, so particularly on the IPO. So um, thanks for joining us today, Jeff, and we look forward to um, speaking again in the future. Thanks very much, Philip. It's been a pleasure.